Now welcome to a review of Star Wars in 2023. A recap, if you will. Right, we'll go over what we saw this year, what we heard this year, and kind of talk about how that panned out. Not so well. Spoiler <laughs> alert. You don't know. You don't know. You don't remember everything on the list. I remember everything on the list, even though everything. I haven't seen the list. Then you didn't remember okay. everything. Okay. Well, I remember probably the most important things on the list, for better or worse. All right. Let's start out with something I know you did like: Bad Batch season two. Maybe the best thing all around, if we're not including a certain game that came out this year. We're talking about everything, so. Hmm. It, it was really good. It has its uh, slower. Kind of a filler-ish episodes, but... Where it reminds you that animation, they try to make stuff that's family-friendly slash for kids. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, see, I'm kind of fine with that, because I know, I, I know the target audience is kind of that... It's fam- an in-between it's, yeah, family Even though they'll have viewing. like a Crosshair episode, which I don't feel like is for children. I think <laughs> kids might have been bored during that episode. I, I think so, too. Some of them. The, mm-hmm. the younger you are, the more likely you may have been bored during that episode, but it's a fantastic episode. It also left you off on a great cliffhanger leading into season three yeah, of the, the final finale, season. Yeah, the finale was pretty, you know, intense too for yes. the younger viewers. It was. It has its really, really good episodes, and then it has its family-friendly episodes. I'm just dying to know what the appearance of an adult clone Omega, a second clone female of Jango Fett, means. Means or when we see her again? Means. We'll see her again, like, right away, as soon as we see Omega in Mount Tantus. Yeah, well, no, I mean, like, when we see her again in terms of, like, after Bad Batch. Because you know they're not going to ditch the character entirely, right? Unless She's going to show up somewhere else. she dies in Bad Batch. There's no way that character dies in Bad mm, Batch. We'll see. I think she is going to be somebody that Dave Filoni brings back down the road. I think she's very interesting. I want to know if she kind of... she Is she an accelerated clone? Because she's an adult, obviously. So, I mean, she has to be. Well, she's not an adult. The, the clone? Oh, well, you're talking about the other one. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting confused. The adult Are we talking about Omega or the... Of Omega. Yeah. She is what I find interesting because she obviously had the accelerated genes, whereas Omega is more like Boba in the fact that it's pure genes, but, you know, aged yeah. normally. Aged <laughs> normally, <sighs> yes. All right, let's talk about the next thing. Mandalorian Season 3 took us back to Mandalore. We finished off the Dark Saber story. We Did moved we the Mandalorians it? in a different and new direction or something. Did we? Did we? I mean, if nothing else, if nothing else, we can say that Star Wars came around, did right by a Medbest. You got another character. Sure, yeah. Right. His I mean, character I don't know from that, the Jedi Temple Adventure game. As great as that was for, for him and for fans of Jar Jar and that he kind of deserved, mm-hmm. a, you know, a nod. I don't know that that's like what you want to hang your hat on for the season. Right. That makes I sense. mean, Din continued doing too many side quests when he was pick, featured oh, he at was, all. Oh, he was Jon Snow. He was McQueen. <laughs> he was backgrounded, which... I don't I don't necessarily dislike Bo Katan's story. I just I think a lot and I I talk to a lot of people about Star Wars, go figure, both hardcore fans and casuals, and a lot of them kinda of have that same sentiment. Like I really felt like it was supposed to be didn't show, so her stepping in wasn't that we didn't like it, it just felt I odd. think a lot of what we saw in this season was supposed to be in Rangers of the New Republic. Oh, absolutely. They could have covered a lot of Bo Katan's story in that show, they could have covered the Pershing storyline in that show. They could have covered the pirates in that show and Din could have done his own storyline. Instead, I think he got wrapped up in things that were supposed to be, like information that was supposed to be given. Yeah, The show had to be crammed into this one. Yeah, I mean, a video I've been wanting to do is about storytelling versus content. And this was content instead of storytelling because you really had things like, well, we brought in these pirates and we know Bane is going to be in uh, Skeleton Crew. Whenever that comes out. Yeah, it feels like, well, Grogu is returned really, really quick for the story, right? So that feels more like it's pushed by execs at Disney because mm-hmm. we want to keep selling Grogu merch. We have Pershing who feels like he belonged in another show. We have all these things that feel like they, they didn't belong in this particular story, but were put in there for content's sake. I agree with what you just said there. You have to keep pushing the, the overall thing forward to keep pushing out more and more content. Next in the Disney Plus world, we had Ahsoka, which was met with mixed reviews. It really has been. It's been a very divisive thing, because I see some people who really, really love Ahsoka, mm-hmm. and then some people who really were utterly disappointed by it. But one thing fans can all agree upon is losing Ray Stevenson before we even got to know his character, who was possibly, probably, the best character in that show. Yeah. Though you could make an argument for Shin, because she took the she world too, by yeah. storm. 
Yeah, I, they both were. They were both by far the most interesting thing in a show called because Ahsoka. Because they were new, they were fresh, they seemed to have their own plans, their own agenda, their own ideals, and it was interesting. It was interesting, and you really wanted to know what they were up to more so than what anybody else was. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think they were the standouts in the Ahsoka show. Yeah, I mean, the, the return of Hayden Christensen in a, in a more yes. in a bigger way than in perhaps the Kenobi series where he also makes a return was also very cool. Right, because this was him actually getting to play Anakin again, not him in the Vader suit. Yeah, so, yeah, we're not know, seeing like a fly. Like we're actually seeing Kenobi. like a progression of something beyond where we know his story. I mm-hmm. mean, obviously his story ends in Return of the Jedi in a manner of speaking. <laughs> so it's the first time we were like going outside of the known Anakin story, if you will. So that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can call it nostalgia bait, you can call it whatever you want. doesn't mean it wasn't cool. And it helps set up the sequels. Um, <laughs> no, actually, it really doesn't. Like, the fact that he's... Well, you didn't... Luke Heft was trying to find his dad's spirit or something in Exegol or whatever. You're talking book. about Shadows of the Sith. Yeah, that maybe his spirit was he kind hanging of out with Ahsoka at the time. Was he doesn't busy. really... I don't think he was, if I'm recalling right, he wasn't, like, particularly looking for Anakin. He kind of stumbles into him when mm-hmm. he's having some issues and Anakin kind of... Is having radio contact difficulties because he can't really talk to him, and it's yeah, it's something. That's because he was busy with Ahsoka. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, this was a different time period, but mm-hmm. what, whatever. Let's not worry about that. But we right also now. had Star Wars Celebration in Europe. We're not going to have a Star Wars Celebration in 2024. We're going to have to wait for 2025, where it will be in Japan. Yes. But we did get a lot of big announcements at Celebration Europe. We cannot discount those. We got three film announcements. You know, we got the the Daisy Ridley showing up on stage. Hey, I'm I'm back, everyone. Uh, yeah. We have no the, one's ever really gone. The Dawn of the Jedi Order film. We have Dave Filoni's Mandoverse film. So they gave us three film they announcements. Did. Two live action series, new live action series. We got the trailers for those. I mean, not everybody. Well, they weren't new, but they were. They Skeleton were previously announced. Things. We got the yeah. trailers. Yeah. We got a trailer for Andor season two, which isn't coming in for a whole year yet, probably. Yeah. <sighs> Whatever. If it if it takes them time to polish it and make it better, it'll be worth. The no, wait. I I agree entirely. Hmm. I mean, I I think of those three movies. If I had to put them in order of likelihood, because we know obviously. I mean, we were supposed to just watch Rogue Squadron was supposed to come out mm-hmm. pretty much this month. <laughs> Three years ago, that was the announcement or the plan. So, you know, whether or not a film actually comes out for Star Wars is always a coin toss to you sitting in the theater. But my my likelihood for coming out would be, I think we absolutely get the Filoni Mando first movie and then the Rey movie. And I really am skeptical about James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi after uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was not exactly a financial success this year. Right. We also had gotten the announcement of Tales of the Jedi. Season Season two. two, yeah. All right, and continuing forward, we this year in 2023, we had Cal Kestis return in Jedi Survivor. Probably the best piece of content, to use that uh, saying, that came out this year in Star Wars. Interesting. I think so. We have the announcement of Star Wars Outlaws, which is coming 2024. Yeah. Unlike the all the other game announcements we've got that have yet to surface again. Looking at you, Star Wars Eclipse. Yeah. And Looking then at you, kind of the, Well, War. we also kind of got the, I don't want to say confirmation, but the seems to be dead remake of KOTOR. We'll see. I don't think Disney wants to give up on it yet. I don't think they want to give up on it, but I think what they were doing with it is kind of dead. Maybe they're trying to shift it somewhere else. I don't know mm-hmm. what's going on with it. I, I do think they want to put it out there because I I wouldn't be surprised if they want that to kind of relaunch the Old Republic for them. Hmm. Who knows? We also have the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. The best Star Wars movie year? ever. <laughs> According to me, yeah, it was, it was back out there in the theaters. It was doing yeah, its it thing, was, yeah. reminding people what a great movie it was. Yeah, it's my favorite. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best. Those can be two different things, but yes. For the novels, we had High Republic Phase Two come to a close and Phase Three begin. Yeah, Phase Two did no favors for the High Republic, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I mean, the first phase the jumping is it... backwards is weird. I don't. It was bad. I don't like when books and stuff do that when they. They start you in this time, and then they jump backwards, but usually they don't jump backwards hundreds of years before. Well, yeah, well, it's already, like, before the prequels, which is fine. It could be set whenever the story wants to be set. But then you go backwards again, and then you're going to go forward beyond the first part, and you're like, why? It's just hard to see the point of the second phase right now. And I don't right. really know I'm that sure we're going to... I'm sure it'll tie in there somehow, Well, it ties but... in. I'm not saying it doesn't tie in or doesn't have any, any relevancy. I'm just saying it, it didn't feel like it needed to do that. Mm-hmm. I think he could have just gone forward with the story. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. 
But it, it certainly took my interest level and kind of tanked it because I thought the phase one was decent. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. We also had the launch of Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures, which I've heard is actually doing pretty well. I know, I know. It's, it's, I've seen the shorts. I haven't watched the full length episodes. I've had a lot of people kind of asking if I've watched it, and I, I, I do mean to get around to it. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where it just, as I've talked about before, it's one of those things where when I, when I hear it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll check that out. And then it just it vacates flies away. my mind. Yeah. yeah, and I never think of it until... The next time I read a comment asking if I've watched it. Well, D. Bradley Baker's character Nubs has spawned a lot of interest. Oh? Oh, yeah. People love him. The cute, fuzzy, blue alien guy. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was just D. Bradley because he's a, <laughs> he's a machine. Reminding everybody that he's a machine. Yeah. Yes. We also got Star Wars Visions Volume 2, which was... Hit and miss. It was hit and miss. It was more hit than miss, but yeah. I think it was definitely more hit. Yeah. I mean, we had ones that really just... I love when you get really surprised by someone. You watched the trailer. We paired everything up. We did those videos. We didn't have high hopes for Screechers Reach. And Screechers oh, Reach best, turned yeah. out to be like the Probably best. Probably the best Oh, one, it yeah. was so good. Yeah. Speech, that one, Spy Dancer. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. I really liked the one. I can't remember the other one. The one with the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too specific. The, you know. I suppose that's really not specific because multiple ones dealt with rocks. Yeah, they pretty much roll on like oh, no. rock planets of some kind, right? Or planets that had rocks. So uh, No, the one with the big good and evil machine up in the sky in the circle. and the, I can't remember the name of it right now. Journey to the Dark Head. That one. Yeah, that one was uh, awesome. Top three, yeah. <laughs> they were definitely Yeah, definitely they were really good, good ones. ones, yeah. It, it was kind of, it was very similar to season one where there were some like really, really good ones, some decent ones, and then a few that were like, eh. Some of them I liked because I liked the art style, but I didn't care for the story. Some of them I loved the story, just yeah. through the roof. A lot of really beautiful animations. I loved seeing the new studios. I can't wait for Volume 3, which won't be next year, but we're assuming it's the year after. Because I feel like Every Visions and Tales of the Jedi is I flip-flop. I think Tales of the Jedi needs to be something that's more frequent, but that's just me. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, the last piece of Star Wars that we're talking about from 2023... Haslab brought out the ghost, which was spoiled for them, which was, oh, yeah, hilarious. was hilarious. And they're like, we have a Haslab project, and we won't tell you about it yet. And someone's like, the, the ghost. ghost. Yeah, so I was like, maybe. yeah. Uh, and they're like, you could see from the look in their face, they were not happy that everybody already knew. It got fully funded. Well, not fully funded. It got, no, it got fully Did funded. Did it get all the way to Zeb? I thought it got all the way to Zeb, didn't it? From A to Zeb. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I did not order this one. This I have no. the first two, but I didn't get this one. I also was backing the Rancor, but it didn't reach it. And I didn't back Rebus Lightsaber too, which is technically a black series, but Rancor. Yeah. Sorry, that's the only thing I wanted. I don't know. Ha- Hasbro certainly has not made any fans this year with their layoffs and the yeah, between the layoffs, the price can the price continuing, continuing to go continuing up. Continuing to go up, yes. To basically like twenty eight dollars for an extra deluxe figure. figures that like come that just because they're a little bit bigger. A little, maybe. When I mean, when you charge me full price, regular price for Omega, and she's tiny, and then because Wrecker's a bit bigger, you're like, he's deluxe. Yeah, you you should think it even it out, buddy. Balances out. Yeah. You know that if I'm getting Wrecker, I'm getting Omega. More than likely, versa. I'm yeah. getting the whole set. Yeah. So now Hasbro is it certainly, evens out. Let it let it do that. I mean, there are a lot of rumors of Hasbro's demise, and I don't think too many people would be sad to see them uh, lose the Star Wars license and to have it go to somebody maybe who cares a little more. I wouldn't be upset to more. see it go to the whoever makes the DC ones. McFarlane. McFarlane, yeah, is it yeah. them? Yeah. I've been liking them. I've looked McFarlane, at them. Yeah. I have McFarlane a couple. seems like a company that actually likes making toys, whereas Hasbro, ironically, does not. They seem to just like Hasbro making loves money. to churn things out to make money, yes. but that's where the buck lies. Yeah, that that's all they. I mean, giant corporation. That is that's all they care about is the bottom line. I mean, I understand things get more expensive, inflation, all that. Certain, but how certainly. is it that that company has managed to churn out really good figures, but kept the price the same? Hmm. Well, I mean, the the Star Wars license itself does cost money, so that does have to be factored in. But, but I'm sure that the DC line costs money too. Probably not as much as Star Wars, honestly. But yes, mm. I, I I'm not an expert on uh, how much these things cost and how much a plastic action figure may cost to make. So, mm-hmm. but when you look at it, and over the course of I don't know, maybe the last three, four, five years, your price has gone up almost ten dollars. That seems to be more than inflation. That seems to be a bit of greed as well. Yep, but that is our list. This is the good, the bad, the ugly from 2023. Well, what's your overall uh, feeling? I mean, if you had to give a 
a score or a vibe check to 2023, what what's, would it be? What's sad? Is that what we say nowadays, vibe because checks? Because of the, the big actor strike that did take place, 2023, because of that, I guess, in a way, it made everything that happened in 2023, all the stuff we did get, feel a little better because we did get something and now we know we're going to have a little bit of a drought. So on one hand, I'm like thankful we got as much as we did considering the strike and how much delay that could be putting towards Star Wars future. Yeah. I but think, yeah, there were definitely still some misses. I'm not going to discount those. I think the biggest problem with 2023 is it didn't get me super excited for 2024. Well, everything got put on hold. Like, why are we taking well, not, a year not off from celebration that. for one? Well, maybe because they have no big announcements next year. Well, they, they do because know. Andor got pushed back. Well, that, and, and announcing the release of a show is not a big announcement. Like, announcing three movies is like, that's something celebration worthy. I don't know that they yeah. have any announcements like that. But my point, it just feels bad not to have it. Well, well sure. But my, my point is, like, I don't know that what happened this year in Star Wars got me super excited for next year. And unfortunately, that's how it has to work when you mm. are in the day and age of content. You need to constantly be looking forward to the next pieces of it. I mean, I'm not saying I have no hope or anything like that. I'm not trying to be a downer here. But I don't know that anything that came out this year, short of excited for Bad Batch Season 3, I'll say mm-hmm. that. But I don't know that, like, Mando Season 3 got me like, oh, my God, I can't wait for Season 4. Or if Ahsoka season one here was like, oh, I, I hope they get a season two. I mean, I want to see what happens to Shin and, and Balin. Yeah, I want to see what the story is going to take us. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about the other parts of it, but I'm not like just like, oh, we can't wait to see that. So that that's the kind of the problem with 2023 for me is everything just felt like, eh, all right, it was there. All right, all right. I, I guess, I, yeah, I guess I agree with a lot of that. Well, here's to 2023 being over and 2024 beginning. Hopefully we get something exciting. I still haven't gone through and done... I, I do it every year, where I kind of look through all the movies that are coming out next year and figure out which ones that we really want to see, and that always excites me. You Yes, you, even before I mean, we ever did like, YouTube Leave it in the like comments that, if you right? want us to end one of our videos with that. Yeah, we Going through thought. our I mean, 2024, let's go see this in the theater list. You can kind of know, look ahead, put a Thor and Naboo into watching. Yes, because we, we love going to the movies, so... Yes, yes we do. Yes, we do. But anyway... That's going to be all we got for 2023. I mean, quite literally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now it's your turn to take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of the year that was and and tell us what your hopes and fears are for the year that will be. Whatever the case may be, leave those comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars or other movies. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>